While they're mostly frowned upon today, sideshows were once a popular form of entertainment not that long ago. Whether they were being laughed at or respected, these performers came in all types, from extremely hairy to having a horn. You won't believe it until you see it. So, here are 20 circus freaks that actually existed. A second face. Have you ever heard of the expression, two heads are better than one? Well, we're sure someone like Pascal Pignon might have something to say about that. He was a railroad worker from Texas back in the day, born in 1889 and generally just a typical worker. Although you might have noticed that it looks like he had two separate heads, but strangely it wasn't some genetic thing. Nope, turns out he had an unusually huge tumor poking out of his cranium that just made it look that way. But when a circus promoter caught wind of his tail, he decided that a major health issue was too boring and instead came up with what he called a crowd puller. So that fake head, it's just a drawn on face over his oversized tumor meant to dupe crowds. But the audiences were into it and he became part of the circus show, traveling around and entertaining people with his uncanny appearance. Years later, a similar case popped up in China about a man named Chang Zhu Ping. But instead of a second forehead, he had a second face on his chin. Though he didn't actually become famous for it until after he had the face removed in the US. At least he didn't try to trick people with a drawing. The Four-Legged Woman If animals are faster because they run on all four legs, would a human be faster if they had a second set of legs to run with too? Myrtle Corbin might have an answer seeing as she was known as the four-legged woman of the late 19th century. She gained fame for her incredibly rare condition where she appeared to have four legs. Born in 1868, she had a depigious twin sister, meaning that one pair of legs was hers while the other belonged to her underdeveloped twin. Myrtle's parents figured that they could profit on this abnormality and decided to showcase her extra legs for financial reasons, promising to use the earnings for her education and future. That's one way to show you care. Myrtle's extra twin was only developed from the waist down and had malformations, including three toes on each foot. What's more, the shape and size of the extra limbs prevented Myrtle from being able to properly walk on them, so she had to make do with the stronger legs that could support her. But even with her challenges, she became a popular attraction and even performed with P.T. Barnum and the Ringling Brothers. Eventually, she married a Dr. James Clinton Bicknell in 1886 and left show business to have a family. They settled in Texas and had eight children, but due to financial strain, she found herself back in show business again. As they say, the show must go on. General Tom Thumb Size isn't everything and Charles Sherwood Stratton is out there to prove it. Born on January 4th, 1838 in Bridgeport, Connecticut, he earned the catchy title General Tom Thumb. But don't let the name fool you. He was no ordinary man. He stopped growing at a mere five months due to a pituitary gland situation. Imagine a tiny bundle standing at just 25 inches tall and weighing 15 pounds. And then along came Phineas T. Barnum, the showman extraordinaire who whisked General Tom Thumb into the world of entertainment. Just a five-year-old Tom Thumb taking the stage at Barnum's New York City Museum. His singing and dancing was exactly what the crowd loved to see and the super short dynamo quickly became a sensation. But Barnum had bigger plans. In 1844, he took Tom Thumb to England, where they met Queen Victoria herself. They wowed audiences all over Europe, turning heads and making headlines. Tom Thumb even found love on the road with Lavinia Warren, another of Barnum's talented performers. The two were married and tied it to their show, making their fame soar even higher. They were a teeny tiny married couple and even hobnobbing with President Abraham Lincoln. After they decided they were done living the show life, the happy couple settled in Massachusetts to spend the rest of their days. In fact, they were so busy living their lives that no one even figured out their condition or how to treat it while they were still around to enjoy the spotlight. The Schlitzy Star Some people are born differently and whether they like it or not, their difference will gain them a lot of attention. Schlitzy Surtees commonly known as Schlitzy, was a performer that stood out for his appearances in sideshows and circus acts during the early to mid 20th century. He was born in 1901 with a condition called microcephaly, 
a small head and intellectual disabilities that made him a distinguishing figure in the entertainment world. His most notable appearance was in the 1932 film Freaks, directed by Todd Browning. In the film, Schlitzie's endearing personality and memorable closing line, Gobble Gobble, We Accept Her, One of Us, left a lasting impact on audiences, emphasizing the film's theme of inclusivity and the shared humanity of individuals with diverse physical conditions. But outside the show on film, Schlitzy continued to perform in sideshows, wearing colorful and complex costumes that contributed to his charm. Despite his disabilities, he engaged with audiences in a friendly manner, and they loved him all the more for it. Long after his years and the spotlight, his legacy endured as a message for how society has treated and portrayed individuals with disabilities. Even though people are treated differently for reasons they can't control, Schlitzy Surtees just wanted to see the best in them. The Ape Woman Julia Prestiana is no stranger to hairy situations, but she did make a career out of them. Julia was born in Mexico in 1834 with a rare genetic condition called hypertychosis which caused excessive hair growth all over her body. She also had a condition called gingival hyperplasia that made her gums stick out, and the two made a lasting impression together that gave her a distinct appearance. Because of these unique looks, Julia became a part of the sideshow circuit, performing in freak shows across the world. She was often billed as the ape woman or the baboon lady, which is the kind of language that brought in paying customers back then people from all over the world would pay to see her and learn about her life, which wasn't easy considering the kind of attention she got. But Julia's life made a sharp turn when she was brought to Europe and exhibited there. She eventually met a man named Theodore Lint, who managed her shows and married her, claiming to genuinely care for her, hair and all. But it's hard to say how true he was, since he later showed off her mummified bodies years after her passing in a show that she clearly had no consent to. But fortunately, Julia's story doesn't end there. In 2013, after years of campaigning, her remains were returned to Mexico and given a proper burial. There were a lot of gaps in her life, but hopefully she finished where she wanted to be. Life of the Elephant Man Perhaps you've heard of the Elephant Man. He was a pretty iconic character whose real name was Joseph Merrick, a British man born in 1862 with severe physical deformities. His condition is believed to have been caused by a rare genetic disorder called Proteus syndrome or neurofibromatiosis type 1, but it was never properly diagnosed. His disfigurements were extensive, affecting his face, limbs, and body, marked by large tumor-like growths that gave him an unsettling appearance. His early life was marked by challenges due to his condition, including physical pain, limited mobility, and complete social isolation. There really wasn't much he could turn to other than being exhibited in sideshows, which is where he gained the name Elephant Man. But his life found a new path when he was discovered by Dr. Frederick Treves, a prominent surgeon at a London hospital. The doctor arranged for Merricks to live at the hospital, providing him with better living conditions and medical care that he never had before. Merrick's story gained public attention, and people from all over started showing some compassion for the first time. He became somewhat of a celebrity, and people began to see beyond his deformities to the sensitive and intelligent person he really was. Despite his challenges, Merrick showed a keen interest in literature and culture that let him bond with many people during his time at the hospital. So even though he was the elephant man, people were finally able to see him just like any other man. The Camel Girl while she may not have had four legs, Ella Harper's inspiring journey began in 1870 with an uncommon genetic disorder that bent her knees backward. This strange leg formation forced her to move on all fours, kind of like a camel. As you might imagine, this odd condition didn't provide any decent job opportunities and eventually led a young Harper to the 19th century circus scene, where she actually managed to find both fame and acceptance. Initially hidden by her family, Ella's unusual walking style drew attention and sparked an idea. At just eight years old, she was welcomed to a circus troupe, showcasing her camel-like strut. They gave her the apt nickname The Camel Girl, and her shows took off to audiences worldwide. But it wasn't a show of taunting and teasing. Ella's performances were both captivating and unfamiliar, as her movements were unlike anything seen before. Her success transcended borders, 
allowing her to tour around the world and establish herself as a prominent figure in the entertainment industry everywhere she went. Yet, throughout it all, Ella refused to let her condition define her. Ella's life during a time when differences were often shunned exemplifies resilience and self-acceptance. She demonstrated that triumphing over adversity while embracing uniqueness is possible even when faced with a world that may not always be kind. But then there were others who couldn't get past their abnormalities in a healthy way. Someone like the Lobster Boy. Tragedy of the Lobster Boy. Lobster Boy, also known as Grady Stiles Jr., was a figure of both fascination and tragedy in the world of sideshow entertainment. Born in 1937, he suffered from an uncommon genetic condition called ectrodactyly, which resulted in fused fingers and toes, making his hands look a lot like lobster claws. Knowing that, it's really no surprise that his condition earned him the nickname Lobster Boy. Styles was born into a family of sideshow performers, and he continued the tradition by joining sideshows himself. With a standout appearance that was also all natural, he became a star attraction and drew in huge crowds. Styles had a charismatic stage presence and was known to entertain audiences with stories and jokes. Behind the scenes, however, his life was marked by turmoil. He struggled with alcoholism and was said to have a nasty temper. His family life suffered and he was arrested for a terrible incident with his son-in-law in 1978. But despite the legal troubles, Styles continued performing and even appeared in the 1981 horror film, Carney. But unfortunately, his life met an untimely end at the hands of a stagehand co-worker that was paid off by his first wife and son. While his whole history is lined with controversy, it's hard to say how much life would have been different if he wasn't defined by his appearance. The Fuzzy Life Fedor Jeftichu, also known as Jojo the Dog-Faced Boy, was a Russian sideshow performer born in 1868. He suffered from a rare medical condition called hypertrichosis, which caused an abnormal amount of hair to grow all over his face and body. But instead of looking like an ape, he was more in line with the looks of a dog. His father, Adrian, was also similarly affected, and they both became famous through various sideshows and circuses in the late 19th century. Jojo in particular was a popular attraction and he traveled extensively showcasing his condition across the world. Although his life was characterized by exploitation and objectification due to his looks, Jojo's intelligence and sensitivity shone through, challenging the common perception that he was just another freak. He experienced a bit of financial success through his travels and was able to live a relatively comfortable life compared to most of his other show companions. His biggest issue was simply how others saw him, not as a person, but as a form of shock and awe and entertainment. It's impressive that he was able to take control of his life to a degree, especially when a lot of others in his situation had a much harder time. The Armless Wonder We've mentioned it already, but life has always had more challenges for the physically impaired. Francis O'Connor learned to cope with these challenges by becoming the Armless Wonder during the early 20th century. She was born in 1914 with a rare congenital condition called phocomelia that meant she had no arms. But even with this disability, her determination and resilience allowed her to achieve remarkable feats that defied expectations. Frances embraced life with a zest for independence and creativity and found new ways to express herself. She used her feet to perform all sorts of things that most people accomplished with their hands, from painting to writing and even playing musical instruments. She wanted to show that she could adapt on her own, but she also went for the most creative outlets. Like many before her, Frances's extraordinary abilities caught the attention of showman Robert Ripley, who featured her in his famous Ripley's Believe It or Not franchise. She became known for her ability to engage and inspire audiences, transforming her physical challenges into a source of inspiration for others to witness. Beyond her stage persona, Frances became a symbol of empowerment for individuals with disabilities. Her life story encouraged others of their own latent abilities, providing that they didn't need to be like everyone else to succeed when they had their own talents. She convinced people to look beyond appearances and recognize the strength of the human spirit. Hopefully, her inspiration is still helping out people today. Prince Rondian's Missing Limbs the Snake Manitoba, the Living Torso, and the Human Caterpillar are show names that all belong to one man. 
Prince Randion left an unforgettable mark on the sideshow circuit of the early 1900s for his special gift. Originally hailing from Guyana, he was born with Tetra Amelia syndrome, a condition that left him totally limbless. But even without arms or legs, his incredible abilities and fascinating performances made him an iconic figure worth remembering today. P.T. Barnum reportedly brought him to the United States in 1889 launching a 45-year career as a major carnival and circus attraction. His fame was highlighted by his role in a film we've mentioned before, Freaks, where he showcased his extraordinary cigarette rolling trick. Clad in a form-fitting one-piece wool garment, he used hip and shoulder movements to propel himself across the stage, in a way kind of looking like a large human-shaped caterpillar or snake. Although his trademark became crafting and lighting cigarettes with just his lips, the prince also demonstrated his dexterity by painting, writing, and even shaving himself. The fact that he could take care of himself was considered spectacle-worthy and people would line up to see how he did it. And while he was a spectacle because of his lack of limbs, another performer we're going to talk about was treated the same for practically the opposite reason. Their limbs were too big, larger than life. Fanny Mills, the Ohio Bigfoot girl, was wowing audiences in the late 19th century with her own rare medical condition. It was one that caused her legs and feet to grow to an extraordinary size that stuck out like a sore thumb. While her upper body appeared normal, her remarkable feet, measuring about 19 inches long and 7 inches wide, were the true source of her fame. Although she wasn't originally from Ohio, she was born in England around 1860 and immigrated to Ohio with her family as a child. Her condition, now known as Milroy's disease, led her to put herself on display in dime museums where oddities and curiosities were exhibited to the public. The dime museums, often called freak shows, were popular attractions of the era, especially with the momentum from P.T. Barnum's American Museum in 1841. Visitors literally paid a dime to witness unusual wonders, and Fanny, with her unique condition, became an exceptional spectacle. Promoters even capitalized on her condition by making up a false claim that her father would pay a huge bounty to any man willing to marry her. Fanny's appearance was fully characterized by massive feet with an average body build. The strange contrast between the two drew in crowds and fascinated audiences. She raked in up to $4,000 a week during her performances, making her a successful figure in the entertainment circuit that was quickly gaining attention. It must have been hard to deal with the drama and the exploitation, but she did reap some benefits out of the deal and was able to ultimately make a name for herself. Cuckoo the Bird Girl Birds of a feather flock together. But what about show performers? Minnie Woosie was a remarkable woman who graced the world with her presence from 1880 well into the 1960s, and she didn't just follow the ordinary path. She strutted, danced, and bird-talked her way into the spotlight. Known as Cuckoo the Bird Girl, Minnie stole hearts as a sideshow performer, especially in the familiar 1932 film Freaks. She was born with Seco Syndrome, a petite head, a small frame, a recessed jaw, and topped off with a feather crown. Her costume only added to the illusion, emphasizing her more characteristic traits that set her apart. She might not have been able to see very well, but she sure knew how to make an entrance. Her signature feathered bodysuit and a head plume made a major fashion statement that didn't seem to catch on, although it did bring people in to gawk. Minnie's performances were a unique blend of dance and delightful gibberish that was so entertaining, to say the least. Despite the stir from her cinematic debut, the movie also showed her and other sideshow performers in a respectful and human light, proving that even freaks have their own magic to share. Minnie kept the show going at Coney Island, dazzling audiences well into her 80s. She was more than just a bird girl, but she wasn't afraid to go the distance in her costume. A Human Horn Some animals have horns and it's no big deal, but the fact that we rarely see any people with horns means that it's clearly an oddity. Myths and legends surround horned creatures, with prominent figures like Alexander the Great and Moses being mistakenly associated with horns from early misinterpretations. But there really are cases of people with horn-like growths that have been meticulously recorded by naturalists and medical experts. The most captivating story unfolded in the 1930s with Wang, 
a Chinese farmer who had a 14-inch horn sprouting from the back of his head. The famous Robert Ripley from Ripley's Believe It or Not heard of him and offered a reward for showcasing Wayne in his auditorium. But the show never came to be. Nor was the reward ever given because Wang vanished from public view during the early 1930s, leaving an air of mystery in his wake. Other cases of bone growing past the skin have been reported here and there, although very rarely does anything come close to the type of horn Wang once showed off. Too bad we may never know what really happened to him. The Kitten of Minnesota Alice Elizabeth Doherty, affectionately called the Minnesota Wooly Girl, holds a special place in history as America's only known hypertrichosis lanuginosa superstar. That might sound like a mouthful, but it basically meant she rocked an incredibly unique feature, a two-inch silky blonde hairdo. Imagine being born with your own built-in wig. Alice's parents were understandably baffled by their baby's developed mane, but they decided to show it off and let others witness her charm. By age two, she was strutting her stuff at local sideshows quickly becoming a Midwest sensation. People just couldn't get enough of the woolly girl. She toured around, making people's jaws drop, while also being as playful as a kitten. A very hairy kitten. But unlike the showbiz savvy dog-faced boy, she stayed a down-to-earth kind of gal that was managed by her family. Even with offers of fortune and fame, she chose her own path and retired at 28. The Thinnest Star even among the sideshow acts, Isaac W. Sprague was quite the character back in the late 1800s. Born in Massachusetts, he stood at just around 37 inches tall and had short arms and legs that gave him a super distinctive look. It's likely that he has some form of dwarfism, but without a proper diagnosis, experts aren't entirely sure about the specifics. Now, because of his one-of-a-kind appearance, he became a bit of a celebrity in the sideshow world. They called him the Living Skeleton because his body was super slim due to his short stature. He joined up with different circuses and sideshows, and one of the big ones was P.T. Barnum's American Museum. But Isaac wasn't just a sideshow attraction. Like the best stars, he had some other talents up his sleeve, just waiting for the right audience. He could sing and even play musical instruments. And he wasn't just known in the U.S. He took his show on the road internationally and made a name for himself in Europe, too. Although he hoped to retire early, his family needed the financial support, meaning he'd always find himself back in show business. There just weren't enough options for a guy with his special traits. Lionel the Lionface We've seen the dog-faced man and the bird-like woman, so prepare to meet Stefan Bibrowski, or simply Lionel the Lionfaced Man. Born in 1890 in Poland, he had a rare condition we've seen before, called hypertrichosis, which means he had excessive hair growth all over his body. His hair, this time, gave him a full mane that covered his face like a lion. Just imagine having a face surrounded by a bunch of hair like that. But it ended up being what made Lionel a standout in the sideshow world. He started performing in circuses and sideshows when he was just a kid, and people couldn't believe their eyes when they saw him. They called him the lion-faced man because of his mane-like appearance. He traveled around Europe and eventually made his way to the United States, where he joined up with the famous Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus. He became a sensation, drawing huge crowds who were both amazed and curious about his look. Once you got past the tangled surface, he was quite the character. He was reportedly a super friendly guy, loved playing the mandolin, and was known for his big heart. He showed that even though he looked different, he was just as human as anyone else, which by now shouldn't be that surprising. Lionel the Lion-Faced Man's life proves that our differences make us interesting and unique, and when you get to the core of the matter, we're all just people with our own stories to tell. The Upper Half Johnny Eck, aka The Half Boy, was one of those incredible characters you couldn't forget Born in 1911, he had a condition called sacroagenesis, which means his lower body didn't fully develop. But man, did he make the most out of what he had. For all intents and purposes, Johnny had a perfectly normal upper body, but his lower half was apparently more compact. He used his hands as legs, getting around like a pro. 
he took advantage of his individuality and ultimately became a total showbiz sensation in the sideshow world. He started performing at a young age, showing off his unique way of moving. Whether it was riding a skateboard or doing acrobatics, he wowed audiences with his sheer determination and talent. People were blown away by his skills and his can-do attitude that sent him soaring. Johnny's fame really took off when he appeared in the classic movie from 1932 that you might have heard of. It was Freaks. Like some of the other prominent figures we mentioned before, Johnny also played a key role and became a household name among Sideshow fans. But beyond the spotlight, Johnny was just a regular guy. He loved his pet birds, played instruments, and even drove a specifically designed car. He didn't let his condition define him, but instead, he embraced it and lived life to the fullest. After all, you don't need two halves to be a whole person. The Success of Violetta Born around 1906 or 1907 in Germany, Aloja Wagner, or as the spotlight newer, Violetta, entered the world without arms or legs. The condition is the same that we've previously discussed, but she knew how to work with it. When she hit 15, she decided she wasn't just going to roll with the punches life dealt her. Nope, she was going to hit the stage. Sideshows became her thing, where she showed off her incredible spirit and determination. Then, at the ripe age of 17, she packed up her courage and talents and crossed the ocean to the United States in 1924. With her talents, she joined forces with the legendary Ringling Brothers and even rocked the stage at Dreamland Circus Sideshow. What made her stand out was how, despite having no arms or legs, she was a pro at combing her own hair, getting dressed in style, threading needles, and even sewing up her own outfits. It takes a lot of courage and hard work to succeed when you have a physical disadvantage. But she was someone who didn't know the meaning of the word impossible. A healthy stretch. Our last subject deals with some strange stretchy skin that might make you do a double take. Felix Whirl was born in Mount Ida, Wisconsin and had a wild knack for skin tricks that just seemed to work for him. It started when Felix realized he had this seriously strange talent. He could stretch his skin like it was some kind of taffy and pull it around in huge bunches. Not only that, but he could also bend his fingers backwards all the way without breaking any bones. Crazy, right? But Felix wasn't about to keep these bizarre skills hidden in this bag of tricks. Nope, he hit the road and became a star on the dime museum scene. And guess what? He joined forces with the big shots, like the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. It seems like these guys were real tickets to success in this world. But it wasn't all just fun and success. It turns out that Felix had a rival. It was James Morris, the rubber man. These days, we can recognize that Felix's stretchy skin and ultra-loose joints were probably due to Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. It's the kind of syndrome that messes with your connective tissue, making your skin stretch like it's made of elastic and your joints super loose. Felix didn't seem to mind, though, and he used his natural ability to the fullest. Mm-hmm. <laughs>